does the word faith mean? Faith actually means unbelief. It means Iman. It's the right word in Arabic, Iman. Having faith, having a belief. And if you ask that, what is faith for me? It is, there are six pillars of faith in Islam. It is belief in one God. Believing in his angels. Believing in the hereafter. Believing in the messengers. Believing in the books and believing in destiny. So these six are the pillars of faith. So if I say that I'm a person who has faith, or I'm a believer, that big word is Mumin. So the moment I say that I'm a person who is a believer, who is a faith. So believe in what? Believe in one God. Believe in the hereafter. Believe in the angels. Believe in the messengers. Believe in the destiny and believing in all his revelations. So if I believe in all these six things, I become a believer. And then there are divisions we can go on. So does religion require faith, a belief in something without proof? I would say yes and I would say no also. Both way. Because if you read the Quran, the Quran starts with, after even the first chapter of Surah Fatiha, the second chapter of Surah Bakra says, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik Al Kitab Lareb. It says, Alif Lam Mim, this is a book in which there is no doubt. It continues, it gives the definition of faith. A person who has faith in the cat, in unseen, means you have faith in things which you don't see. But if I have to explain, there is something like blind faith. But I go a step further, this blind faith is also logical faith. Like for example, if I give a lecture on Quran and science, there are many things I mentioned. The Quran speaks about the Big Bang, speaks about biology, about zoology, about hydrology. And because being a medical doctor, then someone may ask me that, Zakir, do you believe in hell and heaven? I mean, where does science prove hell and heaven? And science doesn't prove hell and heaven. Science doesn't prove that there's life after death. So they ask, do you believe in blind belief? So I said, it is a logical belief that, for example, suppose the Quran mentions about 100 things about science. 80% approximately, just for argument, if 80% has been proved to be 100% correct, the balance 20% is ambiguous, unknown. Not that it's proved wrong. When 80% is 100% correct, and the balance 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong, my logic says that even that 20% will be true. So it's a logical belief. It's a blind belief, but based on logic. So I believe that there is life after death, there is heaven and hell, which is a blind belief, based on logic. So it's a logical belief, according to me it's a scientific belief. But if you ask me scientific proof, science hasn't reached that far to prove the existence of life after death. Or God. Science oh, can't, God obviously can't prove God exists. But I in my lecture, I've proved God scientifically also. Again, using the same logic. But with the help of the Quran. Using scientific data and all, proving the existence of Almighty God scientifically. It will not be directly, it will be indirectly. Like how I use this logic, saying when 80% is 100% correct, 20% is ambiguous, my logic says that will be correct. Unless it's proved wrong. Even if one thing is proved wrong from the 20% is ambiguous, then I can say it may be wrong. So in this way, I've proved even the existence of Almighty God scientifically. This is a big talk about for us. I've given God doesn't show up and perform miracles very often. I mean, he, there are many stories, especially in the Old Testament. But if he did show up today, if Allah came and performed a miracle, then would it be too easy for people to believe? Is that why we don't get miracles on a regular That's basis? That's a very good question. What we believe to the age of a particular thing. Previously, many centuries back, it was the age of miracles. Miracle by definition means you cannot logically prove how it was done. That's called a miracle. So what was miracle yesterday is a scientific fact today. Yesterday flying in the air is a miracle. Yesterday means about 5,000 years back. It's a miracle. Today, it's easy. You and I know. So what was a miracle yesterday can be a scientific fact today. What's a miracle today may be a reality tomorrow. So what I normally say that previously was the age of miracles. So all the messengers that came before, during the age of miracles, for example, Moses, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Bible, he performed miracles, mentioned in the Quran, he performed miracles. Because that was the age of miracles. Prophet Jesus came, he performed miracles. Therefore, we find that all the previous messengers that you find, they did miracles. Then came the age of literature and poetry. 
So when the Quran was being revealed, it was the age of literature and poetry. So the way the Quran was written, today scholars of Arabic, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, they agree that Quran is the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But the way it is written, don't have poke. It was sufficient. They didn't bother about scientific fact. They didn't bother about miracle is there, but now not the age of miracle. But the way it was written, people believed in it. But today is not the age of literature and poetry. If I tell you in a very poetic fashion, the world is flat, will you believe? And the answer is no. Today is the age of science and technology. So the beauty of the Quran is, it has proved itself to be the word of God in all the ages. So can it continue to change with society, with progress? Can religion, can belief change? Yes, as far as can religious belief with society and progress and all, what we say that the understanding of the Quran can change. The same Quran was there 1400 years back. The way it said that not to have poor poetic fashion, people were convinced. Today, the poetic fashion won't convince me anymore. Today, we have come to know about science. Okay, if you have poke, there are so many diseases. No less than 70 different diseases. They can be tapeworm, pinworm, hookworm. So now, because of the advancement of human knowledge, we believe in that verse not because of poetry, because of scientific knowledge. Quran is the same. And the law is the same. But knowledge of us has increased. So one verse of the Quran has got various angles. So... Did man evolve or was man created? Man was created. But after creation, his knowledge keeps on developing. So what knowledge we didn't have a few centuries back we have today. For example, if you tell me that Isaac Newton is supposed to be the best scientist of the century. But today a person who has graduated BSc, graduate of science, he has more knowledge than Isaac Newton. He knows all the laws of Newton, he knows his mistakes, but he's not a better scientist. Isaac Newton with the limited knowledge, the advances he made, the discovery he made, it is phenomenal. So human being, their knowledge keeps on increasing, their way of life keeps on changing, but the basic remains the same. So coming to your question, what I'm going to say, that can religion change by passage of time? The basics will never change. The basic understanding of Quran will always remain the same and of Islam will remain the same, but the periphery may change. And even because of understanding of science better, the what we call fatwa as an opinion may change. For example, the basics of religion, I would say, have been the same in Christianity. There's no religion as Christianity, as I told you in the morning. It is basically all the prophets taught only submittable to God. In Arabic, we say Islam. But all the prophets, what we call today, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or Prophet Moses, Prophet Abraham, they taught the same message of believing in one God. It's the same. The form of worship prostration is the same. How to worship, where to keep your hands, that may have changed. From the time of Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, Prophet Muhammad. After Prophet Muhammad, it has been fixed, finalized. So, basic message is same, believing in one God and following his commandments. The integrity may have changed. After the Quran, it is finalized. Again, the basic message is the Quran cannot change. So, what is intoxicant is prohibitive, will always remain a prohibition. But, for example, the Quran says, that don't make your own hands the cause of your own destruction. Surah Bakra, chapter 2, 195. That means committing suicide is prohibited. Previously, maybe a few decades before, no scholar said that smoking is prohibited, is haram. In Arabic, we say haram, prohibited. But now, because we have come to know, World Health Organization says that more than 4 million people die every only day. Smoking was not wrong because the knowledge was limited, but the rule is the same. So our interpretation changes over time with no more knowledge. I wouldn't knowledge. say interpretation. I would say that the basic interpretation is the same. But with more knowledge, our way of life may change. The basic will remain the same. Oneness of God will remain. It cannot become two tomorrow. How to pray will remain the same. But about the nitty gritty, so what to eat, what not to eat. So broad lines have been given. When science advances, we come to know this is poisonous. If it's poisonous, it's private. So previously, not that those scholars were fools, but the knowledge wasn't developed. So with more knowledge, we get more in-depth, and the minuteness, the periphery may change. The way we live may change. But the basic message will remain the same. So religion can change with progress, but let's talk but, about what doesn't change. Scripture. It's written. Okay. How are we to interpret Scripture? Is it literal? Is it stories told as metaphors? Is there a combination? How are we to know how to interpret which 
As far religion changes, as I told you, some part of understanding of religion basically the same. So if you say that Zakir's religion changes, that's totally wrong. And that some part understanding may change. As far as scripture, scriptures cannot change. Now, according to William Moore, William Moore, you might have heard him, that he is one of the staunchest enemies of Islam, a very great historian. He said that no book has remained, no religious book has remained as pure as the Quran for 12 centuries. That he wrote 200 years back. Being a staunch critic of Islam, yet he had to agree that Quran is unchanging. Now, most of the religious scriptures today that we have, besides the Quran, are not in the original form. So, by definition, a religious scripture cannot change. But all the religious scriptures that we have today, except for the Quran, have been changed.